I've been editing photos for the past six years on a near daily basis inside of Lightroom. And over that time, I've become incredibly fast and efficient at using Lightroom and getting the results and looks that I'm after. So when LoopDeck reached out and wanted to send me their LoopDeck Live to incorporate into my Lightroom editing workflow, I had to jump at the opportunity and try it out. What would it be like interacting with Lightroom in a completely different way? Would it speed up my editing workflow and would it be as easy as it seems? Well, today, we're gonna find out. All right, let's first talk about and cover the setup of the loop deck because I was preparing myself for an absolute headache, but fortunately, it was the complete opposite. Setting up this little guy is as easy as plugging it in, downloading the loop deck software, installing it, accepting some permissions, and then going ahead and installing the Lightroom Classic editing workspace on your loop deck. I was also preparing for having to set the loop deck up from scratch. I had no idea what to expect when I first got this. So I was imagining that I would have to go in to the loop deck software and somehow map keys to what I wanted to be able to do inside of Lightroom. But fortunately, loop deck's already done all the hard work here. Now I did make two changes to the loop deck setup. One of those was adding my own Lightroom presets onto the third page of the Lightroom Classic workspace. This is such a cool feature, being able to just put your presets literally on the touch of a few buttons right here. It makes things so easy, especially when applying presets. So that was a non-negotiable. I then also added a little zoom functionality to the library tab, just to be able to zoom in and out and get a little bit more clarity of what I have and haven't selected and if things are or aren't in focus. Now, getting into the Lightroom side of things, there is a steep learning curve when it comes to using the loop deck. I'll be honest, it took me probably about a good 30 minutes to start really getting a good grasp on how to use this guy. And it made me feel like a complete Lightroom beginner again. It felt like I had just started photo editing. See, the thing is, you don't know where any of the settings are when you first pull the loop deck out of the box. How do you navigate Lightroom? How do you get to the develop tab? How do you adjust your colors? How do you add masks? The whole lot, the list goes on. So it's gonna take maybe 30 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half to really get kind of familiar with how this UI works. But once you're familiar, things get pretty good from there. As it stands, I've got about an hour to an hour and a half of editing experience under my belt with the loop deck. So we're about to dive into Lightroom Classic, edit three photos from scratch and see just how good you can get at editing with the loop deck in a short period of time. So without further ado, Let's dive in. Alrighty, so here we are inside of Lightroom Classic and I've got a shoot loaded up from the other week when I was out in the desert with my good friend, Josh. And what we're gonna do here is go through all of these photos. We're gonna make our selects and then we're gonna dive into the edit. So first things first, I'm gonna dive into this shot right here, which I'm just gonna spin this little dial right here. This is my custom mapped zoom function. And now I can just scroll through all of these photos. I wanna be able to see the photos as they are in the bigger screen purely so I can see what's in focus, what's out of focus, and you know, get an overall better sense of what I'm actually selecting. When I wanna make selects, all I've gotta do is press this down. It's gonna set the rating to three. And if I wanted to make any other ratings, I'm just gonna be able to do it on the screen here. So I actually like this photo, even though we just rated it, I much prefer it over the vertical one. So this in horizontal and landscape looks much nicer. And now we're just gonna go through these. This shot here would definitely be nicer with a subject in it. This shot here, ooh, I definitely like the foreground, but it might be a little too much. Here we go, this is exactly what we were after. This is Josh looking, ooh, actually, yeah. So we've got one here, Josh looking at the camera. We've got one here that looks quite candid and natural. And this one, Josh might be looking a little too far away. So let's go back to this one. I'm gonna rate that one. I've already got my shot here. Yeah, definitely pick the best one there. Oh, and now I've got Josh in this beautiful little cave, I guess, hole in the wall, however you'd like to uh, you'd like to say. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of the one with the camera up to the face, but it's definitely the best composed. Otherwise, he's too over to the left. So we're gonna have to take one of these ones. Let's go one of the darker ones right here. I'm happy with that. And then we're gonna scroll over here. I definitely am not a huge fan of this. While this is a really sick location, uh, the light just hitting Josh straight in the face isn't too flattering. As you can see, he's squinting quite hard there. Okay, so we've got these three photos right here. We've got this one selected. We've also got this one here. And then we've also got our first one. And just before we dive into the edit, I'm just gonna take my mouse here and turn the filters on to make sure we're only working with our rated photos. Just a little bit of an easier way to keep track of the photos that we've got to edit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to page number two. That's gonna send us over to the develop tab. And now the fun begins. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do for this photo here is increase the exposure. 
I'm also going to increase our shadows to make sure we're not losing any detail in the shadows whatsoever. And then we're just gonna slightly increase the temperature just a little bit. I know we're already in the desert and this was shot at golden hour, so we've definitely got a lot of warm tones in our shot, but I do just wanna sell that warm morning feel a little bit more. I'm also gonna come here and I'm gonna increase our contrast quite significantly. This is gonna add a lot of depth to our shot and make sure that we are seeing the dark parts to be dark and the light parts to be light. And I'm actually quite happy with how that is looking straight out the gate. I don't think I need to touch anything in regards to our highlights. If we darken those, it just becomes a little, maybe, maybe we'll darken them just a touch. And with that said, I think that's pretty much our basic tab done and done. I'm now gonna move over to our page number three here. And this is actually where I've set my presets and you can do this on your loop deck as well. So for example, if I just tap into these presets here, we can go through them. These are my WhatsApp portrait presets. You can find them in the master collection. And as you can see, we could just pump through all of these right here. They all look quite good, even though this is a landscape shot, however, I would say number one probably sells that warmer tone a little bit nicer than any of the others. So for now, I'm gonna leave it at number one. So that's pretty much all I'm gonna be doing on the portrait, on the presets page, the portrait preset page, goodness me. And now we're gonna dive into page number four. Now this, of course, is where we're gonna be diving into all of the colors. So first things first, let's open up the red and orange hue dials. And what we're gonna do is just increase our orange saturation a little bit. And then we're gonna make sure our reds here are a little bit more over to the orange side. This might be magenta in the middle of the image right here that's throwing me off a little bit. So we might also open the purple and magentas up and then we're going to take our magentas here and make sure they're on the red side of town. But we're also gonna desaturate them like crazy. Same thing with the purples right here. We're gonna desaturate those and now that area of the image is looking a lot cleaner. Yes, definitely much nicer like this. I'm gonna open up the blues here and we are going to saturate them just a little bit more as I do like the blues in the sky. We're gonna do the same thing with the aqua as they are very, very neighboring colors, if you will, and things are starting to look great. I would say, however, I do want to increase the temperature just a touch, not too much, but definitely putting a little bit of warmth back into the shot isn't gonna hurt. So that was just done in page number two, and now we're back over to page number four. I'm gonna come into here now and we're going to open the uh, split toning dials. This is where we're gonna be able to put either warm or cool tones in the highlights or the shadows. What I can do here is I can choose the tone that I wanna set my highlights to. So for now, we might actually look at setting those to the blue side as that might look quite nice. We can also increase the saturation here just a touch. And then the shadows are also going to be on the blue side ever so slightly, even though I said before, oh, this is the balance. Even though I said that this is gonna be a little bit of a warmer shot, I still want a nice contrast and color in there. And I would say things are looking good. We're gonna to come to the yellow dials right here, the yellow saturation slider. We're gonna move this over to our orange side a little bit. We're gonna desaturate it. And we're also gonna drop the luminance ever so slightly. And then this is our green. The green's already pretty much killed off. We will, however, drop the luminance just a touch. And then the last thing I wanna do here is come into the blue sliders and we're going to reduce the aqua and blue luminance just to uh, darken that sky a little bit more and make it look like we shot with the circular polarizer. This is getting really, really nitty gritty, especially with all the colors. I was happy with how it looked as soon as we'd put the preset on. However, obviously I don't wanna just whack a preset on here and be done with it. That wouldn't be too much of a tutorial whatsoever. Coming over to page number five now, I'm gonna open up the vignette and grain dials. And what we're gonna do is we are going to drop a vignette on this image and that makes it look so much nicer. I'm already a huge fan of this edit. If we have a look at a before and an after, this is looking really tasty. However, I am keep I keep coming back to the temperature. We are just gonna increase the warmth a little bit more and things are now looking really nice. A little before, a little before, there we go. And an after, maybe it's a little too warm. Maybe in the shadows, it's a little too warm. So if we come to number five, we open up our shadows, our shadow hue. There we go, we might just saturate those a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy with this edit. That is looking great. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come over to page number five. I'm gonna hit copy all settings. And what that's done now is that's copied all our settings. We can now move on to our next photo. And this photo here, we are now gonna hit paste all settings. Now, of course, 
Out the gate, this might not look ideal, especially because we changed a lot of our white balance, which is never a good thing to copy and paste over, but this is very, very quickly fixed because we can just hit number two here and we can start dialing back this white balance, which is already going to change the whole look and feel of this shot straight away. We might also increase our shadows a little bit here and also dial back the contrast as we did definitely crank up the contrast before. And now I'm pretty happy with how that is looking. Maybe the highlights down just a touch as well because we're starting to get a lot of, uh, a lot of bright parts in the sky up there. Okay, that's looking super nice. I'm gonna leave the preset on as is. I'm quite happy with the base edit. And now we're gonna move into number four. I'm gonna come in here to the orange and red sliders. And we're just gonna desaturate this orange a little bit. And we're also gonna come to the red and change that back over to red, just in case we have any colors that are a little bit rogue at the moment. And what I'm actually looking at here, if we take the orange hue slider, we might actually move this over to, mm, I don't wanna go over to the yellow, maybe just a touch. We might do plus three, Not nothing too crazy. However, on the, yellows, on the yellow hues, we are going to move this over to the yellow side a little bit more, maybe desaturate this quite a bit more as well. And now things are looking quite tasty. Back over to our blue sliders here. We are going to, I'm actually gonna do the opposite here. I'm gonna increase this because I don't want it to be too fake, especially in the sky. And then I'm also going to increase our luminance just a touch there. Right now, as is, I would say I'm quite happy with this edit. We might need to increase the shadows just a little bit more so Josh isn't too dark there. We might also look at increasing our exposure. I don't wanna to go too high because I really like the tone of the sand there. We might go just like that. And then we're gonna come into number five, vignette and grain. Let's take that. And then once this is open, we can just dial in this vignette a little bit nicer. And now we've gone from this to this, which is looking super nice once again. I'm gonna copy all settings, and then we're gonna move on to the next photo by pressing seven. And here we have Josh in the little cave. I'm gonna paste the settings, okay? Pretty interesting out the gate. We're gonna hit number two, and now we're just gonna increase our temperature just a little bit, definitely looking nice. And then just increasing that temperature until Josh's skin looks good is pretty much where I'm gonna be happy with right here. So we might dial it back a touch. Jump over to number four, which is our colors, red and orange dials. We might dial back this orange a touch because it's quite saturated. And we're also going to dial back our yellow saturation, even though it's pretty much all killed off. We might also dial back our yellow luminance to quieten down a little bit of area on this wall right here that's uh, registering as yellow. So I'm quite happy with that. We're then gonna come into the blues here. I'm gonna increase the luminance because I don't want it to look too fake. And now we might just dial in a little bit more of a vignette. So if we come over to here, vignette, I'm just gonna quieten it down this a little bit, not too much. Let's have a look at the before and after. Ooh, that's looking nice. I'm happy with this shot, that's for sure. I would say at this point, things are looking quite good. Now, the one thing that the loop deck does, I wouldn't say struggle with because it definitely wasn't built for it, is masking. So let's say, for example, we are working with this shot right here, okay? Let's say we wanted to select the sky. Well, I could add a gradient filter and then press sky. And that, of course, is just gonna use AI. It'll select the sky. Now from here, we could, I guess we could just kind of maybe adjust the exposure a little bit, maybe make it a little darker. No, definitely not. Maybe a touch brighter actually looks not too bad there. And then for example, if we wanted to, we could come back to number five. I could press the gradient again, and then I could, for example, hit subject. Hopefully that picks Josh up. Oh, it's good. Now it's just got a little bit of the rock here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly use the um, mouse here and hit brush. We're gonna hit invert, and we're just gonna brush this away, as this is definitely something that the loop deck can't do um, because obviously we don't have a screen or a mouse or a touchpad or anything that we could kind of make specific, very dialed in selections. Uh, and then all I wanna do here is reduce the contrast on Josh. And then we also might just a touch increase his exposure. Nothing too much, maybe just dropping the contrast. Looks good there. Okay, I'm happy with that. But as you can see, for example, if I wanted to create a radial mask like this, 
I just can't do that on the loop deck. So I know this is an amazing tool and it's not trying to replace the mouse and keyboard. There are obviously some things you have to still do with the mouse and keyboard. However, this is a really cool tool to be able to interact differently with Lightroom and just have a completely different experience. Now, the last thing I wanna do here is run through the crop tool because this is something that I definitely didn't think I'd be able to do on the loop deck. So if we open up page number two and I'm gonna hit my crop tool right here, I now can finally adjust, if you will, um, the crop. So for example, we got rotate here. I'm gonna try and get that back to zero or as close as I can. Let me just double click there. And then I can also move in and out. So maybe we wanted less of the sky. Okay, no problem. And maybe we wanna move Josh a little lower on the frame there. And since Josh is already in the middle, we don't need to go left or right. I might also look at cropping this for Instagram. So we're gonna hit four by five there. Oh, now we definitely need to move Josh a little bit higher on the frame. Okay, things are looking good. I'm pretty happy with that. So now we can exit the crop tool, happy with that crop. Let's say for example, we wanted to crop this image here. I'm gonna open up my crop tool once again. I'm going to just crop in, oh, that's the rotate once again. I'm just gonna crop in a little bit here, just like that. And then for example, I can move left and right after pressing this dial in. So before it was up and down. Now, if you press it in, it goes to left and right. We're just gonna off center Josh's head a little bit there because he's got the camera uh, in front of him. So we just want him as the subject to completely be in the middle there. And I would say more or less, or oh, after we crop for four by five, more aspect ratios, there we go, four by five. All right, I would say I'm happy with that. And then finally, we're gonna come to our first photo here. We are gonna open up the crop tool and then I'm gonna do my favorite crop on landscape images. So there's the crop tool there. We are gonna do 16 by nine, which looks amazing. And you know what? I don't even need to move that. Maybe we look at punching in just a little bit, but nothing too crazy. I would say that is looking quite nice. And there we go. That is this photo edited from this to this. We've got this photo of Josh here edited from this to this. And then our final shot here, we've got this to this. And that was all done on the loop deck. All right, guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed, let me know down in the comments below. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the world. Once more, thank you very much, Loop Deck, for sponsoring today's video. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.